Hello guys, I'm Yadaka Reddy and welcome to the series of Java for Absolute Beginners. In this video, I will explain about constructors in Java. So what is meant by a constructor? Constructor is a block of code which is invoked at the time of object creation. That means whenever you are creating the object, you are going to call the constructor. So then the constructor code will be executed. So in my previous video, we have already discussed about class and object in Java, right? So we have seen what is a class and how to create a class. And we have also seen what is an object and how to create the object, right? So at the time of object creation, we have used the constructors, right? So let me take you to the previous session class files. So here, first I have created one bike class with some variables and some methods. So these are the members of a class, right? Then I'm creating the instance for this bike class in the program file class here. So the instance is nothing but the object, right? So here I'm creating the instance. This is a syntax. First, we need to mention the class name, then the variable name equaled new keyword and constructor name, right? So here bike is a class name and this bike is the variable name equal new. New is used for creating any object in Java. So next we have the constructor. So this is where the constructor part comes. Okay. So in my previous video, I did not explain much about this constructor actually. So in this video, I'll mainly focus on the constructors only. Okay. So in previous video, we have just said one point only like whenever you are creating the object, we are going to use the constructors. So that is what we have learned, right? So in this video, we'll mainly focus on what is a constructor and how many types of constructors are there and how you can define the constructor and everything about the constructors. Okay. So first, what is a constructor? Constructor is a block of code, which is invoked at the time of object creation. So that means whenever you are creating the object, you are going to invoke the constructor like this. Okay. So you will call the constructor. That means you are invoking the constructor here, right? So next, how many types of constructors do we have? We have two types of constructors. Those are implicit constructor and explicit constructor. So this implicit constructor is also called as default constructor. That is because user is not going to provide this one. By default, Java compiler will provide you this implicit constructor. That is why we are calling this one as a default constructor. So in the explicit constructor, the user is going to provide the constructor. So that is why we are calling this one as explicit constructor. The user is explicitly mentioning the constructors, right? So that is why we are calling this one as an explicit constructor. So this explicit constructor is again divided into two types. Those are parameterless constructor and parameterized constructor. So if you are passing any parameters to the constructor, then we call it as a parameterized constructor. So if you're not passing any parameters to the constructor, then we call it as a parameterless constructor or no argument constructor. The parameters are nothing but the arguments, right? So that is why if you're not passing any parameters, then we call it as a no argument constructor also. Okay. So these are the types of constructors. So let's see one by one here. So first we will see implicit constructor. Okay. So basically the constructor syntax will be looking like this. So first we need to define the access modifier, then your class name, then parameters. So this parameters is optional here. Okay. So in the parameterless constructor, you are not going to provide these parameters and in the parameters constructor, you are going to provide the parameters, then open the curly brackets and close the curly brackets. So within the curly brackets, you are going to write the code. Okay. So why we are actually writing the class name for the constructor? So basically that is a Java thumb rule. So the constructor is also one kind of a method only. Okay. To differentiate between method and constructor, we have this rule. So the methods actually have the user defined names, right? So if you are providing the class name as the method name, then we call that as a constructor. Okay. So that is about the syntax. So first let me open the Eclipse. So here I'm creating one object. So I'm calling this constructor. This is a parameterless constructor. So I'm calling this constructor, but if you open the bike class, here, I haven't defined any constructor. So in this class, if you see, I don't have any method with bike name, right? So the constructor syntax is like this, right? So if you have any method with bike name, I mean, the class name is bike, right? So if you have any method with bike name, then that is a constructor. So here, I don't have any method with the bike name. That means I don't have any constructors defined in this class, right? So here I'm calling this constructor, but I don't have any constructors defined in that class. So that is why we are calling this constructor as a default constructor. Okay. So the Java compiler is providing you the constructor, even though the user hasn't defined any constructor, the Java compiler is providing you the constructor. So here, if you select this bike and right click on this one and go to open declaration. So here it is taking you to the class. Okay. So it is not taking you to any method or any constructor. Basically it is taking you to the class. That is because the default constructor is not visible inside the class. So here inside this Java file, the default constructor is not visible because this compiler is actually adding that constructor at the time of compilation. So by default, it is not providing the in the class file, right? So it is added at the time of compilation only. 
so that is why it is taking you to the bike okay so generally what happens when you go to any declaration or something it should take you to the definition so here we have some method right set color so if i right click on this and if i open the declaration so it is taking me to the method directly right so this mapping is there but for the constructor it is not taking to the constructor so it is taking me to the class that is because the default constructor is not provided in the class so this is about the default constructor so you cannot modify the default constructor why because the default constructor is not defined in the class itself right so you cannot see the constructor so if you don't see the constructor how do you modify the constructor then so you cannot perform any operations from your side on the default constructor so the default constructor is provided as part of the java compilation okay so you cannot modify or you cannot perform any operations on the default constructor except you invoke that constructor you cannot perform any other operations okay so that is about the default constructor so here i have program 6 class so if i just create the bike instance here with the default constructor how do i create bike bike equal new bike okay so this one we have already seen so this bike is actually a default constructor now because i haven't defined any constructors in this class one more thing is the implicit constructor is always a parameterless constructor only so whatever the default constructor is there that is always a parameterless constructor only okay and next we have explicit constructor so what is the explicit constructor user has to provide the constructor right java compiler should not provide it the user has to provide it then we call it as an explicit constructor so how the user will provide so this is a syntax for providing any constructor right so let me add the constructor here so basically in the class after declaration of the instance variables we are going to write the constructor okay so that is like a structure so you can define the constructor at the end of the class also but this is like a structure okay so here first i need to write the access modifier so for the constructors there are actually some rules the first rule is the constructor name should be equal to the class name so that is what we are actually doing here right and the next one is constructor should not return any value so here we are not returning any value so if you take any method the method is returning some value right so here it is not returning any value but if it is not returning any value we are mentioning it as a void right so the return type we are mentioning here even though the method is not returning any value the return type must be there but here in the constructor the return type also should not be there okay so here we have removed that void also right so that is the second rule and the third rule is constructor cannot be abstract final static and synchronized so constructor cannot use any of these keywords basically constructor can use only public protected and private okay so let me declare the public constructor here public next class name by and open the parentheses and close the parentheses and open the curly brackets and close the curly brackets so this is a parameterless explicit constructor so here in the explicit constructors we have two types right parameterless and parameterized so first we will go with the parameterless then we will see the parameterized so this is a parameterless constructor basically the default constructor and parameterless constructors are same only but only difference is in the default constructor you cannot perform any operations right that means you cannot provide any code within the default constructor so if you want to provide any code within the default constructor you have to define explicit parameterless constructor so here you can provide the code okay so here what is the purpose of constructor basically the constructor is used to provide any values at the time of object creation only okay so generally if you want to assign any value so here i have set the color to red right so like this if you want to assign any values at the time of object creation only then you can use the constructor so basically here after the object creation i am assigning the value right but if i want to perform this operation at the time of object creation only then you can use the constructor so here i'll just simply print the value or i will initialize this color with some default value okay so i'll make it as black so here i don't have any color value right so i'm making this one as a black color so whenever i create the object this color variable will be initialized with the default value as black so basically if you don't provide any value for the color it is initialized with null value right because the string value default value is null but here i am initializing that one with black color okay so now after this i will call that get color method okay so i'll print this one so now let me execute this code so here it is printing black right so basically this bike class is having one constructor so at the time of object creation i'm invoking this constructor that means whatever the code i have written inside this constructor that is invoked first so first object will be initialized then this code will be executed okay so that is why this color is having black so after that i'm getting the color so that is why i'm getting black color in the console okay so one more thing is the parameterless constructor can be defined only once okay so for example here 
in by class you can define only one parameterless constructor so if you try to define other parameterless constructor even though you have changed the code inside this method it will not work so that is because you cannot have two constructors two parameterless constructors inside one class because these two are actually same only right so it doesn't matter what code you are actually having inside so it matters only this level so that is why it will treat this one as a duplicate one so you cannot have more than one parameterless constructor inside the class so that is the rule and the next one is parameterized constructor so what is a parameterized constructor so if you pass any parameters to the constructor then it is a parameterized constructor right so here let me add one more constructor so here in every class you can have the parameterless constructor and parameterized constructor also so let me add the parameterized constructor here so i will say string color so now what i will do i will assign the color value to this one so i am assigning this color value to this class level color variable okay so now if i create the object for this one using this constructor let me go to this one so here i will pass red color okay so now if i execute this class now we are getting red color right so previously we are getting black color that is because we are calling this constructor okay we are initializing the color variable with this black color but here we are passing the color okay so we are passing the color and we are initializing this color variable with this value so whatever you are passing that value so that is why here i am passing red color so i am getting the red color right so that is about the parameterized constructors okay so in the parameterized constructor you can have n number of parameters actually also you can have n number of parameterized constructors so the signature should be different so for example like this you cannot have because the parameters are actually same so even though you modify the naming convention here it will not accept so here also it is only one string and here also it is only one string but here if you modify the parameters like this number of gears then it is allowed because the parameters are different here okay so like this you can have n number of parameterized constructors okay so now it is very clear right so let me summarize one more time the constructor is nothing but it is a block of code which is invoked at the time of object creation so the constructors are used for providing any values at the time of object creation and we have two types of constructors those are implicit constructor and explicit constructor the implicit constructor is also called as default constructor that is because it is provided by default from the java itself java compiler will add that constructor and the explicit constructor is again divided into two types parameterless constructor and parameterized constructor so this parameterless constructor is also called as no argument constructor so if you don't pass any values to the constructor then we call it as a parameterless constructor and if you pass any values to the constructor then we call it as a parameterized constructor okay you cannot perform any operations on the implicit constructor because this constructor is by default provided at the java compilation time so by default you cannot see this default constructor inside the class so it will be provided at the time of java compilation only okay so that is why we have explicit constructor this explicit constructor is defined by the user so you user can perform any kind of operations so if you want to just mimic the default constructor as explicitly then you can go for the parameterless constructor so this parameterless constructor can be defined only once in the class file and the parameterized constructor can be defined n number of times in the class file by changing the parameters okay so that is for this video guys i hope you enjoy this video if you like the video please hit the like button and also share this video with your friends so if you are facing any issues while writing the program or if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below thank you for watching bye bye